God bless America and Case Knives. Hey guys, Net and Fancy Shot Show 2012. Bet you didn't know I was a Case Knife fan. I know, I've been hiding it. I've been holding on to that little tidbit of information specifically for this booth review and subsequent Case Knife model reviews here in the Nut and Fancy Project. You'll see them as we go along. One of the big things I love about Case is they are Americana. Pure and simple, made in the USA. They go way back to the 1800s. Fit and finish, their steels, their quality, smoking. And I'll tell you what, Case Knives has gone out of their way to host a Nut and Fancy project. Check out this display case they got. Is that amazing or what? Look at the presentation. And all things Case Knives are that way. They're just presented beautifully. They understand the importance of presentation, the attention to detail of the knives, which actually that's my job here today at SHOT Show, to show you that in person. The attention to detail, the amazing quality levels that Case Knives has. Say hello to my son, Tactical Doodle. What's up? What's up? We have a conference room, Doodle. I know. Is that awesome? Is we so can actually scale? hear I know. and see the product. Say hello to Katie. Did I get your name right? Yes. There you go. She's a comp company historian. Nice to meet you. Thanks for making time. Say hello to Fred. Hi, America and everywhere else. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh, and guys, this is just real informal talking about Case Knives. This is, we are passionate about the brand. We wouldn't be here if we weren't. And well, I can tell. <laughs> it's not a secret, is it? No. As we're setting up the booth review. I thought review. you came in here on Acme Springs. <laughs> He's got me pegged. He's got me pegged. We're going, and actually, we'll talk about the models here in just a sec, but Fred and I were going through the K. I mean, I'm really trying to say, yeah, pull this out so we can talk about it, and I'm getting distracted, aren't I? I'm like, oh my gosh, that handle is so awesome. Kid in the candy store. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a passion. Here, with me personally, with my son, we love case knives. We love the case knife story, to be honest. To set the foundation, what we're getting ready to talk about, about, uh, well, go ahead, Fred. The case knife story. I it mean, goes back a ways, does it not? Yeah, it goes back to before uh, the 1900s. Uh, started with a bunch of guys named Case, three brothers and a brother in law, and they started fashioning knives and selling them along a wagon trail in upstate New York. And they came to Bradford, God knows why, but they came to Bradford, PA. <laughs> You're still questioning you know, that decision. Yeah. 1905, and we've been, we've been making knives in Bradford, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Um, also the home of Zippo Lighters since uh, 1905. Wow, that is some crazy, history. That's some history. And what's interesting about Case Knives, there's so many things, is that Americans just grabbed onto the brand. And they don't let go. That even in 2012, with all the knives that you and I covered, Doodle, on the floor, and there's some amazing knives, some amazing manufacturers, really cool the Tactical Blades, traditional blades manufacturers, Case holds its own and it continues to grow. You have the largest collector club in the world of knives, true or false? It's true. 19,000 plus members. Well, and that says pretty much anything you need to know about the brand is that there are guys that are so, and I don't, I don't rise to that level. Uh, I'm a novice case knife collector. There's guys that know so much more about all the variations, the historical things. They issued this knife at that year. I'm not there. I know what I like. I know that when I hold a knife like this in my hand, and I see the fit and finish of this. Look at this blade right here. You only have to have two to make a collection. And to be addicted. Right, exactly, yeah. You only have to buy one to be addicted. And it's, thank you. And I'm gonna forewarn you guys right now, you be careful because it is like. Spin that around so you can see the other side of that blade. What's that say? Photo. Proto. What? It's oh, proto. Oh, I thought it said H. Prototype. That's a prototype. Yeah. Like, check that we're out. actually still working out some of the, the details on the mid folding hunter and uh, we're adjusting some of the back spring. Uh, so it, that's that's not as it will be seen once it shows up in stores after the shot show here. So here I have a prototype blade. Look at the gleam coming off of there. Look at the fitting of the handle scales. We do each the one pins. of them by hand. And this is a by prototype. Yeah. State side, no less. Yep. Yep. So American made by hand. I mean, I could go on and on about that. It just connects. And, it, and there's something, I've always called it second kind of cool, mm -hmm. that there's something that just touches a dude inside. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And then here's what I was going to tell you guys. Be careful when you buy one of these knives, 
because you may just get addicted. You'll go, whoa. You know, you'll get a mini copper lock like this. You'll start actuating, playing with it, carrying it. You will get comments from your friends and family, and then the next thing you know, you've got 10 of them. Knife envy. Knife envy. <laughs> Do you see people like that? Oh, yes. In the case you world that go through every that? Every day. Yeah. Every day. I've seen some at the SHOT Show. They walk up and they're asking to purchase right now out of your your yes. uh, your case and say, hey man, can I buy these? And you guys didn't bring enough for that, but we have about they want to buy it. They see it, they want to uh, buy it. Questions wanting our product just since this morning. So. Yeah, well, we also know what's going on there. Last day of SHOT, oh, guys are seeing if oh, they yeah. can score some deals or That's something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey man, you don't want to carry those back, do you? All right, so great intro, Fred. Great intro, Katie. Awesome. We're going to talk blades now. Let's get serious. We're going to start with this palette right here. Fred, take it away, my man. Okay, we're looking at uh, three rust locks up on top. Um, this handle style is called, uh, it's part of our pocket worn series. And pocket worn for us was is kind of like, uh, you know, uh, hefted. They're, they're hefted a little bit more. Right, they're finished. Right away. They're finished a little they bit do. more. I love and, the pocket uh, worn. They're my favorite they're ones. They're kind of like when uh, stonewashed jeans came out, you know? It's kind of like uh, it's been used for a while. It's been carried around for a while. That That's rough black. Rough black is an interesting story because back during World War II, a lot of the hand materials that were used on our knives, you, we, they, they couldn't get their hands on it. So they went looking for handle materials. And they found this real hard black rubber, and they brought it back to the shop and, to, and did a jigging test on it and found it, it could actually work and hold on a knife. What happened after the war is the regular handle materials came back and these things became collectible. So we've brought this this idea, this rough black. They used to call them gum funny knives. What? Isn't that great? Gum funny. <laughs> gum funny as in G U M. Gum, gum funny. F U D D Y. Yeah, oh, funny. that's the way to spell it. That is anyway. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah, they, come, they became known as gum funny knives, and it has a special jig. The, the texturing on that handle is special, unique to the rough black family. I'm so glad you intro that. This is not made up. We haven't re rehearsed this. Nope. Here's why. Because that word you just said, lost in in American history, but it's not lost a case. No, we we, we resurrect a lot of things. Right, Miss Historian? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> the, there you have these encapsulated parcels of American history that are always part of the case line. And you can go back to all the things we went through as an American people in the 1920s, in the 30s, the Great Depression. You That's talked right. about World War II, the lack of handle materials in World War II, and it's historical and it's great and it got a following there. And now you have, I'm gonna start crying, and now you have a <laughs> knife that represents that. You know, it's just so cool. It is cool. What's well, neat about this too is that this is a uh, uh, one bladed, uh, one hand opening knife and this is actually uh, manufactured and fashioned off of the straight razor. WR Case was one of the last manufacturers of straight razors. Also this is called the Rust Lock and our founder Russ Case who his marketing scheme was uh, case knives can sell themselves they don't need anything else other than you show a knife to somebody and they want and so this is fashioned after uh, Russ Case himself, so, you know, that was named after. Hitting on all cylinders, isn't awesome. she? That is awesome. And it's awesome the because that, there's passion, there's realness in this. There it's is. not the, artificial. The, the guy that designed that knife worked for the company for 50 years. Yeah. And, and he actually, said he died at the workbench. Died at the workbench. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tommy Hart. That's say. sad. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but it just shows dedication That's and, right. and where their passion is. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so this is a Russ Lock. Look at this gorgeous handle right here. Go ahead, Fred, you were saying. That's like uh, dark red, Katie? Yep. Jig dark to bone, jig. right? Jig bone, standard yep. jig. And that's such a great story on that. What color is that? Is that pocket worn harvest orange? Oh, harvest orange, that's yep. right. Just Case has a variety of jigs and handle colors, but this is actually, this particular color brings out that particular handle jigging, which Corn Cob got its name because of the look that it has. And also the inlays you guys do on the handles, you vary that up all the time. We're gonna co cover some other models here if we have time, seriously, there's so much to talk about, there's dude. Um, we'll do the best we can, but I love the different ha handle inlays. That is the Rust Lock, I love it. It's just so old school, it's so case. It's a case specific blade, That's is it true. not? It's that actually, no one else is making a knife no, like that a, or ever has. It's a design, yeah. so it, it's one of our own. Okay, and yep. this knife right here, Fred. The mid-folding hunter. And that looks like uh, gray bone. Gray bone, yep. yep. With uh, an as ground blade. 
And this one, this one is, and you said that, the as ground. Look at this, yeah. guys. This is the non-polished, just ground, right? That's right. Talk to your steel real quick, Fred. It's the True Sharp stainless, right? It's True Sharp, True Sharp surgical steel. It's a stainless steel, and um, it's kind of the steel we've been using since stainless steel uh, First came, came, came out. out. Yeah. Before that, we had chrome vanadium. Right. This is this is chrome vanadium. This is cases. Uh, Original. Original steel. Yeah. Now, we use uh, 420 stainless steel, but we have a fantastic heat treating process, and that's one of the things that had uh, really brought Case to the forefront, even from the very beginning. Russ Case learned the heat treating processes, and then he took that with him and made his own company, and that's where you see the XX. I mean, that was a registration mark that we, we adopted. Under normal circumstances, some people might think that 420, that 420 is is an inferior steel to like a 440, but when we're done heat treating our steel, it's it's every bit as good as other steels. Yeah. How about rust resistance on the True Sharp? You kind of got to take care of it, don't you? Or is it like I haven't really tested it hard as far as it knowing can, what it'll rust. These knives are too can nice, stain nice yeah. to go out and thrash yeah, on. We like case. we like to make it stains less. It doesn't mean stains. that it's. Yeah. Okay, so basically like any other stainless steel as that's far right. as rust resistance go, you gotta take care of it. Right. Look at the finish on this one, guys. That's your high polish finish on the True Sharp. And the handle material on that is just amazing. Look. Look at that smooth antique. The type of bone that we use is actually uh, a zebu cattle bone. They're shin bone. And each really? one. Really? Yeah. From Brazil. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. It's yeah. a shin bone. Shin yeah. bone. Why is it yeah. just a density? That's very what does it. High, yeah, very dense material. And what's fabulous about this material is that each die uh, job that you do, each knife actually is unique because it absorbs the coloring differently. There's really essentially, no matter what you do, there's no two identical case knives. I love it. Love this knife. I love the rust lock. Here comes a trapper lock. And I was talking about the inlays, guys. This is, look at that. And there's the, the XX mark that Katie was talking about. It's shown on certain okay. models. Yeah, you flip it around, it kind Go of ahead. gives it a crown look. You know, flip it. Here, you do it. That way. We call gorgeous. that Regal Stag. Now, some guys who've been following an fancy project, they go, well, nothing fancy, you love these case knives, but there's so many other traditional knives. Uh, there are, there's some really great models out there. These just connect to me. I don't know how else to say that. The, the fit and finish, the polish, the, the pocket worn, the history of case knives, they just connect to me. I don't know what, how else to say it. It's second kind of cool, I'm totally admitting that. It's second kind of cool, and that means it's, it's off limits for well, it's criticism, culture, man. <laughs> because it flies so in the face of what everyone else releases. They release the newest steel with the newest handle material, and it's supposed to render everything else obsolete. We're supposed yep. to forget it and move on with our lives. And this is keeping so much of that Americana, that that love of what you I do love alive. It. Love it. And that's love really what speaks to us. Well said, Tactical much. Doodle. Uh, and this is real, not made up. Look at this palette right here, bros. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Okay, this is one of my favorite models right here. You don't have that chamois cloth, do you? Yep, right here. Cool. I'm going to knock this fingerprint off for this model. Look, I'm going to start off with the most awesome. Fred, you tell them about this knife right here. This is a, a canoe knife, and for you guys new to case knives, it comes from the shape of the handle. See that? So that's the tip of the canoe, tip of the canoe. That's where it got its name, right? That's right. Um, this particular model you're looking at here, uh, has a mammoth ivory handle. Oh, I love it. Mammoth ivory. It's been, uh, you know, locked away in the frozen tundra in Russia and right. in the, uh, in, in, in the Arctic. Rust. It's been away for 20,000 years. But, but they call that the bark of the ivory. And what that means is that that's the outer layer. That's what it looks like when they're actually excavating that from the permafrost. It How has, hard is that to get? That handle material. Yeah, it's, it's very it's, exotic. I mean, there, there's a lot who's of. Who's your supplier for it? Where would you even go? Hey, I want mammoth for a handle material. There's we, probably people that get it and sell it, no doubt. Right. The, there's a lot of legalities that come with obtaining such an exotic material. I bet. However, uh, we get all of our stuff that has been excavated 
and so you have to do a, a little bit more investigating into your your resources. Yeah, where did it get sourced from? Right. Is it right. legit? Yep. Right. Yeah. I love that. And Fred, talk about the Damascus blade on this particular canoe model right here. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a Damascus uh, raindrop pattern Damascus blade. It comes from Thomas Damascus in uh, Utah. I, no, 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 Arizona or Nevada. No, he he was in Nevada. Now he's I moved on. Oh, now he's in yeah. Utah. I believe he's in Utah now. Okay. Or, Tom, look at how many Damascus. more knives we have to talk about. We're 15 minutes in, dude. Seriously, there's gonna be a long review. But if you love case knives, you were gonna love this booth review. So that that rainbow pattern, nobody makes it like that. And nope. You, you can look at other rainbow Damascus patterns out there. Can't there's find just it. nothing that compares to the Thomas. That's going to be an expensive blade. I mean, we talked about the handle material. The steel is going to be expensive. And the pricing levels on all these knives varies highly according to the handle material, the, the machining operations that number were done to the knife, the yep. number of blades. So it's all really all over the chart. So if you really want an affordable um, case knife that it's, it's highly collectible, and, and I always say collectible in terms of the user, that it's special to you, you love it. Maybe it grows in value, maybe it doesn't, don't know. Right. But one thing you guys do a very good job of is you just don't spit knives out continually. You're always discontinuing. We're gonna show you some plaques here. Here's some right here. They go into what they call a vault. They will actually squirrel away some blades that they manufactured. They will imprint them with a special handle inlay and then years later they come out and they do it in presentation. Well, heck, I'm talking about it now. Katie, if you could hold that up. That's a copper lock vault set that they are selling. Look at the presentation on it. Okay, and these are, those, that tang, or I'm sorry, the handle inlay says a year, doesn't it, Fred? Yes. I love the copper lock, by the way. I like the mini copper lock even better. They're serial numbered. I think they're serial numbered, are they? Yeah, these are. For the, the vault knives that you have. Yeah. There's the long tail C serialization on the bolster there. Dudes, how could you be a case fan and not want that? Just to be hanging on your mantle. I sound like Home Shopping Network right there. Yeah. <laughs> order now, there's only 15 left, but I would love to have now, this is big. It's just beautiful. <laughs> it's just beautiful and it's special. It's incorporating everything. So anyways, I want to show that and the, the beautifulness, but getting back to that is that you limit it. You're not just yes. throwing it out there. Right. So you can actually buy one of the more affordable case knives yep. and then you check it back to the website a couple years later and it's no longer available. It's That's gone. right, yeah. <clears throat> And yep. there's several handle materials in the canoe, not several, lots of them, and I have them in my personal collection, I'll show you on tabletop, that are gone. They're, they may come out in vault form again, they may not, who knows, um, but these are just a few of the representations that are currently available. What's that one there? That's uh, That's our limited edition watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. watermelon. Isn't watermelon. that beautiful? So how would you like to give that to your wife right there? She opens a box for her birthday present and she sees a canoe knife like that. Let me tell you a story. Uh, my operations group commander, good friend of mine, uh, I gave him a canoe. He had no idea what Case Knives was, and I gave him a very special canoe knife. I think it was, uh, I forget, it might have been the amber jigged bone, whatever it was. Right. It was it pocket worn, beautiful polished blades. He almost cried when he opened that. Wow. I engraved it for him. I said, hey, this is for you. Thank you for your friendship throughout the years, and he will never let that knife go and the quality and the specialness that we see right here is what makes that possible. It is. It's a unique individual gift, you know. It's a, it's a gift that's given from one person to another, and it, it, but it's, it's, it, there's sentimental value there. You always remember who gave you that gift. You may not remember a gift certificate to Applebee's. Right. It's awesome, right. but it's not something tangible <laughs> that you hold and actually fight, you know, fight to keep it and to always hand it down to the kids. Right. And let me tell you guys this, this is honest to goodness truth from nothing fancy. The reason I have my case knife collection, okay, I mean, you know, you know I have lots and lots of knives, guns, all that good stuff, is for this right here. Hand me down to my son. That is a direct hand me down of this quality level from my kids to them and they can connect with dad that way. So there you go, a little bit of realness. There it is in yellow. I love this. This is a chestnut, it's, isn't it? That is, that's smooth chestnut bone. This oh, one, this beautiful. is our next limited edition series that it hasn't even, I mean, being shown at the SHOT Show for the first time. It's uh, not and even is this available harvest? yet. This is a harvest orange. This is what called Marigold. What? Marigold. So that's the first time you've shown that one? Yes. 
You have limited the edition. Look at the stamping on that. You have the exclusive. Yes. <laughs> I feel fact, privileged. In fact, there's many of these knives that are, that are exclusive. One of 3,000 in the world the, right there. And the Fivory. 2,500. 2,500 is yeah. it? Yeah. 2,500. Cool. All right. I love this oh. one, too. Still love that. Is that is that the stag right there? Yes. Yep. All right. We got to keep going on. I'm just getting distracted so much. That is uh, one of my favorite huh. models of all time. Katie, correct me. That's 3,000. 3,000. Fair gotta enough. Get it right. That's all right. There we go. I'll Those are the canoe right knives. Now. Here we go with the copper locks. I just showed it a little bit, and these are just gorgeous. Great job. So watermelon, abalone. I'm going to bring that light doodle. I want these guys to see the detail. And the, again, the watermelon, abalone. Wow. The detail on it. The abalone is going to be an expensive handle material. All these really special handle mater materials. And all knife makers will be expensive. Go ahead, Fred. And this one has this uh, little special I know, I love that. Case XX decorate, decorative uh, bolster engraving. And every, t I mean, I have some in my own collection there. You just did that. It's just something different. Well, and it's to you, dress them up. You guys have something going here because you're like, you know what? We need to make another hundred thousand. Hey, I know what? Let's put like that special tain stamp on it. And <laughs> we know. suckers in the case knife world will go, I'm in. It's I amazing love it. that um, you'll be creating something and then all of a sudden something pops in your head and that says, this will just add the finishing touch on it. This is going to make someone so happy that this this little copy is on there and it, you're absolutely we do correct. it and it's just amazing it just creates such beautiful uh, touches to our knives it's the Could little details that make all the difference for for you, from one collector dude to the next. you were wise bringing her in here you were wise he's like i want katie in katie, there too katie's been in the, uh, with the company for a long time she knows a lot about our knives and she knows a lot about our history she needs to both you guys are just doing home. fabulous uh who's signed this is a john wayne isn't it yeah, yeah. that's a that's a duke knife a duke knife and this is a, go ahead katie uh, do you mind if i tell the story about john wayne go right ahead okay um john wayne actually um was given a case knife that he carried in his pocket by his uncle Although I, I can't track the name of the uncle right off, but uh, the other interesting uh, connection that that we you know don't really necessarily put out there, but the, kind of an inner case story, is that uh, Russ Case, the founder of W.R. Case and Sons Cutlery Company, was also a, a farmer, and he had lots of cattle and you can help me out here Fred but uh, Longhorns. Texas Longhorns that he actually uh, shared a, uh, a herd of them that were part of the herd that was in the movie Red River Red River nice and, story and so in that movie is Russ Case's cattle how fascinating is that? And we never People even, don't even realize the awesome connection. trivia. We never yeah. even knew about it. Right. But when we signed John Wayne uh, as a licensee, one of we John about Wayne's sons loved Case so much that he came to Case uh, about 20 years ago and toured the factory and really, you know, he we gave huh, him a whole bunch. What do you know? He made accident. a connection with the blades yeah. too. Yeah. How crazy is that that we yeah. that, that our company's founder had paddle? Yeah. That we're in John Wayne's in his movie. movie. Yeah. Look at the fit and finish on this one, guys. Beautiful blade, this copper lock. And that's red jig bone. Is that a yep, better name dark for red. that? Yep. There it is in harvest orange. Is that's that not har harvest orange. I got it wrong. It's orange peel. Orange peel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's lots of different handles. It's easy to get confused. It is easy. What isn't? It's but not I'll tell you, <laughs> But you'll know what you like when you see it. You'll yeah. go, and I'm in the case over there with Doodle going, I love that. That's cool. Now, and it's, honestly, there's some that, you know, for my own taste, I'll go, ah, yeah, that's cool. Not for me. But right. you can find what you like. Right. One of the ones you you have done that I've loved, this isn't it. This is Blue Jig Bone. Yep. What's the name? Sorry. Right name. Blue, Blue Jig. Bone. Okay. Yeah. Barn board. It's oh, not on the board. table. I love that blue barn board. I'm going to show the guys that in tabletop. It's Here's, just absolutely beautiful. Here's a barn board. Okay, so it's this in blue. So it's Dark this glasses. barn board. I just love it. Gorgeous. And there's so many handles they've done. And then this one is... This is a silver script golden rod. Golden rod. And instead of boring out a hole and then putting a shield in into that hole, we uh, actually fit the letters in as a scripted shield. That Look at that. 
That is there. bone, but that bone is not cut away. That's still part, all one piece. Dude, that couldn't be cooler. I'm like rolling the knife, it's glinting. I know. <laughs> We this actually just gorgeous. Yeah, in our in our knife makers in the factory they actually you know, fit those in by hand. So that's inlaid awesome. into the bone. Yes. He's cut. Again, we get back to the hand fit and finish that Case Knives is doing down there. Uh, each none of these light knives are leaving the workbench until someone's looked at it and go, "Yep, that meets our quality standards." That's right. I, I'm not going to say, and honest to keep it real, I'm not going to say that doesn't happen at a lot of knife makers. It does. Yeah, it There's does. some great quality levels, but definitely at Case. Let's cover this one real quick. This is one of my, we're running out of time. This is one of my favorite models, guys, the Mini Copper Lock, because it's functional and it's beautiful. It's going to feature all the different handle materials that Case does. This is Mother of Pearl, right? Yes. So this is the same blue jigged bone, and there's a chestnut smooth bone. And stay tuned to TMP. I'm going to show you some other beautiful mini copper locks. And they're functional. These are a really awesome pocket knife, especially if you get the pocket worn ones where it's smooth and rounded. It carries so nicely. No, it doesn't have a tactical clip. It's old school pocket knife. There's nothing wrong with that sometimes. We can all do that. That's right. It's, you don't need a clip all the time, especially no. for a knife that's so compact and lightweight. I've been using these for probably a couple years now. Love them as a pocket knife. Thank you very much. Love it, love it, love it. That's a mini copper lock. And then, uh, Fred, I'm going to have you talk about these two right here. The large stockman, it's a 75 pattern. And uh, it's uh, something that uh, real working, working class folks can can buy and use and sharpen a lot, use them a lot, use them over and over again. This one in Stag, we, we haven't done a Stag 75 Stockman um, that I could find in the last 20 or 30 years at least. So that's actually being debuted here at the SHOT Show. Well, one of my favorite handle materials is are your Stags. They're just gorgeous. Um, I, your bone is such a versatile material because you can color it how you want to. Like you said, Katie, it takes on its own characteristic yes. when you color it. it. Each one, each knife emerges as an individual, and that's the large stockman. I think we got some mini stockmans we'll show you here in just a little bit. And what's this one right here? That's a trapper lock. That's it? a back pocket. Back pocket. Yep, deep canyon jig. How popular is that knife? Uh, it's actually, it's pretty new. It uh, came out on the scene about two years ago. I'm not familiar yeah. with this one. And so it's uh, we. It was developed by uh, Case and and custom designer Tony Bose. Tony's a world-renowned custom knife maker, and he's. I got think he's a uh, huge BMX bicyclist too. Oh wait, that's the other Bose. He's dude. got a ton of <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> wait, there's this picture. Tats and ear gauges, yeah. gauged <laughs> ears. Yeah, we're kidding. Although they both have mad skills, so. Mad skills. She's hanging good, isn't she? Yeah. All right, so. Um, one thing I want to mention is the blade shape is that classic clip blade shape. How many times have you heard that here in the Nut Fancy Project? Lots and lots. It's such a functional tip on the copper lock and all these knives that you can actually do some surgical, surgical work with it, precise detail work, and yet it's got belly that you can cut with. Uh, and these knives, I was asking Fred about the True Sharp. My experience is they will take a wicked sharp edge after use. They arrive very sharp. Each one is hand honed on your machines there at the case. Am I correct? We yep. take a lot of pride in making sure that they're sharp out of the box. I will vouch you get it right. Thank you. I mean, there's I'll maybe. Vouch too. Uh, there's <laughs> maybe <laughs> Welcome to the knife world. I popped myself at the SOG booth this year. That's all right. All right, Fred, I'm going to give you that. Okay. Careful. They got classy band aids, though. Most people yeah. Let me see skin. that band aid. Again. They have custom <laughs> bandages. Classy. I, that's on a good word for it. On the underside, it says WR Case, cut me again. That's <laughs> kidding. Both in my wallet and on my fingers. Everyone that shot in any night has at least this one. This is bandage. a fun booth for you. It happens to everyone. Okay, guys, here we go. Mini toothpicks. Look at all the different handle materials. Some you've seen in the other blades we've shown you already. Smooth chestnut. Hope the coloration's coming through. There's the blue bone. These look pocket worn, are they, Fred? That's harvest orange. This is yeah, this is pocket worn. Pocket worn. That means it's rounded, it's smooth. Right here, that's it's, pocket. It's made worn. to feel like you've been carrying it around. The pocket worn mini toothpicks are insane for collectability. Don't buy one because you're gonna get hooked. There's the black one that you talked about. You know what I'm saying? What's that coloration right there? That that's is jig chestnut bone. Jig chestnut. Yep. Okay. Yep. This is a very popular popular coloration in all your knives. I'm showing the yellow, Katie. Yep. Yes. 
doesn't that just continually sell well for you guys in the yellow? Because yeah, it's so traditional. Yep, we've used it for a long, long time. In case yellow knives go back probably 90 years or more. Yes. And I'll tell you a secret too. Remember what you're going to say, Doodle. Um, is my knives that are workers that I'm not afraid to thrash on, I'll, I'll have a couple of yellows in the rotation. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's a perennial material for you. I know if I break that knife, I lose that knife, I can go get another one. For right. me to go out and use one of my amber jigged, uh, my blue barn board. Actually, I do have a blue barn board in the rotation. Uh, I'm a little bit more worried about that because I know that if I lose it, I'm going to have to go to eBay and pay two prices for it, which, by the way, these knives on eBay do go up once their production ceases. Yes. Mostly. What are we going to say? Uh, I'm just wondering what material that is. It's Delrin, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's a synthetic. Yeah, I think yep. it's Delrin well, synthetic. synthetic. Love it. Okay, there's Stag right there, mini toothpick. Beautiful. They had some real awesome jades come out. Uh, is this jade uh, jigged? This, that's green. That, green, yeah. but uh, the color one, jade. One, uh, I'm trying to think the one I have. We did. Uh, we did. We did sell jade. I mean, it wasn't like right genuine yeah. jade. I'm just re-referencing yeah. the, like the color jade. Yeah, they yeah. had the uh, arrowhead I shield. I could afford on. regular jade. That would yeah. be that would be cool though. A jade yeah. handle. It oh would be cool. Yeah. Look at the beautiful coloration on this blue right here. Are you guys digging this? I hope you are, because oh, yeah. we're in it. We're in it. We're in it. All right, moving along, and let's show this one real quick. Katie, you, you're going to do this board for us. Hit it. <laughs> it's her turn to shine again. I hope you're watching this full screen high def, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Our cheesy camera work. This is the cheetah. This is actually back out of the vault, and this is a second cut jig. It's, it's a very uh, older jig that Case used to carry uh, maybe at least... 20, 30 years ago is maybe part of their standard production line. This is very reminiscent and older jig. Uh, also, the pattern is, and, and this is actually one of our most uh, collected patterns, the cheetah is. Um, I love that knife. Just and a that's a bit. locking blade, guys. Yep. Show it. Clocks Close back there. Because I love it. Yeah, you can... Uh, Case of make... This has, this, has this swing guard that uh, folds yeah. up. Yeah, don't even don't even feel it when you put it in your pocket, and then you pull it out, and uh, you know just a little extra protection so that this kind of thing doesn't happen. So it happens to the best of us. Um, right. By the way, we didn't show it on the um, the trapper lock, but you do have some trapper locks with the clips on it. Yeah, we do. Just a couple. We just started doing that. Uh, I'm a fan. I mean, I don't need a clip, but when a knife gets this size, uh, I would like it. It'd make it nicer. And your clips are gorgeous. Or they match the handle. They're fitted. They do carry tip down. <laughs> It'd be nice, but I mean, whatever. It's a traditional knife. Go ahead, Katie. One of the mini uh, stockmans. The, the, these are the 33 stockmans, and this is stag. This is see how it very. Uh, yeah, each, each side piece is, is different. Yep. Each piece of stag varies, um, and then this is some of the other handle colors that we've seen. This is orange peel. And then this is a newer color for us. This is magenta. And we put a new shield in there. That's one of the other variations that Case adds, you know, with your arrowhead shield, your Isn't diamond that awesome? shield. The attention to detail is just amazing. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's just fantastic. It's, people don't understand how hard it is to make a pocket knife. And when you miniaturize it like level. that, put blade, three blades in it, it's, right. it's just, it's a, it's a they're little mechanical miracles that's what Tony Lowe's calls them right I I a couple of my case knives I'm very when I get a case knife I want it to be perfect I want it to be smooth and there was one that didn't meet my personal standards I sent it back to case I got it back not in a week it took a while and when I got it back it was perfect I don't know what they did but they fixed it and it deployed smooth and it was right where it was and yep. so I'll vouch for your customer service there thank you yeah this is a Case virtually makes about uh, 15 different types of Stockmans. This is another variation of a Stockman. This is the 18 pattern. And then this is uh, Mother Pearl, uh, another toothpick variation. But Case uses the highest grade of Mother of Pearl that is available. The top grade. That's the kind that has the, the marbling and the dimension when you're looking into it. The iridescent. Yep. And there's that lettering on the back there. See that? Yeah. Cool why, why put a shield in there and take away from that beautiful piece of pearl? We'll add that case logo on the Work poster. of art. Well done, Katie. And then here's a couple fixed blades. We'll show these real quick. This is one Fred brought out and I was like, that's a pretty cool knife. That is a Macarta handle. 
That's G10. G10, okay. Yep. Look at the thickness. Obviously full tank. Awesome jimping, great thumb ramp. I'm with my left hand here. The steel on that is true sharp? Yep. Yes. Okay, this thing is wicked sharp. It's just like, a, it's a very heavy yeah. gauge. Very heavy gauge, probably the thickest gauge that Case orders right now. And by the way, I have a couple of your Case Bowie knives. Oh my gosh, are those cool. Yeah. Collectible cool. And actually they're a functional blade. Yes. They're yeah. nasty. Yeah. They're a, they'd be a nasty fighter. I've had people call me and tell me that, you know, they got animals using that Bowie. Yeah. Are you, you guys are still making that too, aren't you? Yes. yes. I, I think the white handled version's out there. Probably both handles, white and black. Yep. Yes. They're both yep. out there. That is a lot of knife for the money. That Case Bowie knife. Yes, it is. I'll roll in a picture right here, guys. Beautiful yeah. knife. This comes with a leather pouch sheath right here, guys. Leather pouch. And the name of that is? The utility knife. The utility knife by Case. And really quickly, I'm going to show you. You say really quickly. No such thing on the booth review like this. Stacked leather handle, traditional knife. Fred, take it away, brother. What's neat about those is that we, uh, we actually, in the factory, still stack those leather washers and then turn them on a stone by hand. Yep. Finish them off. Yeah, each, each leather piece is put down around the, the tang. It's got a full tang. So each piece of leather is stacked by hand. And then they smooth all those edges out to make it a nice, nice finish. And they're all very, you know, they're all very ergonomic. I mean, it doesn't matter what size hand you got here, but you got the nice gimping for your thumb. It's just perfect. She said gimping, dude. Hmm. She totally said gimping. So yeah. maybe that is a word. I love this knife you have, by the way. What uh, is the name of that one? This one? I this is. I to put you on the spot. It, it's, it's just a hunting pattern. Leather hunter. I, yep. I love that knife. Look at how thin the blade is, guys. Can you rotate that, Katie? Yep. Awesome gimping. <laughs> Hmm. on the blade. Or We're jimping. laughing yeah. because we did or name jimping. tapes and he, he sent it in and put a G instead of J on it and so yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a stupid yeah. story. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Look at that Wait. one. That has a great belly for this, skinning right yeah, there. Yeah, this is this is a sharp nice, and swedge on the top. Nice skinning. These are traditional knives. These are not first kind of cool to me. They're still second kind of cool. Go ahead, Fred. These I just call this a night head and I remember the Bird. The, the old knight head uh, helmets that they had in me medieval days. Yeah, okay, I did yeah. not know that. We actually still pour those by hand onto the handle. Yep. Sick. Pour and you did right say they're that. full tank too. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right? Yep. That's, yep. that's what's all underneath through. all this this leather. What's your, and I, I have been great with this, because the prices, I'm talking prices, the prices are all over the, the map depending on the stuff we talked yeah. about. Yeah. These are more constant. What's the price level on this? More or less. Uh, uh, another hundred. That retails probably around uh, seventy-five dollars. And so that's a lot of American-made knife for your money. Uh, in the second kind of cool, there's you know there's other knives that may perform better because this is a leather stacked handle. You get it wet, it stays wet. All the stuff I've talked about a bazillion times. By the way, when I mentioned on my SOG agency review about the fit and finish of leather stacked handles, guess which knife I was thinking of. You're looking at it right here. The case knife leather handle. There's other manufacturers that are doing it right. And actually on that SOG HC, it's done pretty good. This is done to almost perfection. There's no lines in between there. You run your thumbnail along this. It's just a continual smooth transition from the beginning of the knife all the way to the butt. There you go. It's a one timer right there. Man, we, how long do you think we've been talking? Take a guess. 30 minutes? Feels like five minutes, but it's probably 39 30, minutes. 39. 39 minutes. This is Holy a sod buster, guys. I want to show you this is a utilitarian knife. Oops, showed your dealer cost on that. Burn. <laughs> More or less. And then they have a blue version. This is a lot of knife. It's not non-locking blade. It's the true, 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 I can't speak, true sharp stainless steel. I love that blue version. Do you like that knife, Fred? Yes, I do. It's actually it's it's cheap, too. My, my dad always knife. had that yeah. pattern in his uh, sock drawer, you know, where we went to look for a loose change. And so it's, it's a, been around. It's the Sodbuster pattern has been out there forever. And I think, right. yes, it has. and there's other manufacturers to do it, too. Uh, Case isn't the only one. It's. I don't think it's a proprietary design. Uh, a lot of guys make it. But I love the blade shape. Flat yeah. ground, good belly. Yeah, nice flat grind and, and nice where the, the blade and the spring meet up with Transition each other. Yep. And uh, it's great budding Slip knife. Toy. Budding knife for what? Yep. Gardening. Oh, great gardening yeah. knife, yep. Cool. Hey, women knife for budding See, gardens. Yes. Actually, there the, the sidebuster is a very popular woman's pattern just for that purpose. 
very affordable. You go to get a Sodbuster, I think street price around 18 bucks or something. Could be, yeah. Depending yeah. on the size and your source where you yeah. get it. Oh my gosh. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to wrap it up, but we're into this review if you can't tell already. Fred, take it away, brother. Okay. What we got here? You got another 18 pattern here in dark red. Here you have a uh, mini trapper in uh, Sparks. And our Sparks series has this uh, white uh, synthetic handle with a kind of a sparkly, blingy looking shield. I love it when you color inlay your shield, by the way. Depending on the model, Thank and you. The I like but that it's just too. cool. It's just yeah. an enameled shield. It's just really sick. Pocket worn rust lock. This is uh, another 18 pattern. That's a uh, navy blue with a red enamel shield. This is uh, one we just took out of the vault that uh, not too long ago. Our style belly, three bladed, with a pocket worn Bermuda green handle. Just gorgeous. That's a nice presentation. We're going to end the booth review right here, fellas. I don't know, dude, is there anything over this there? This is pretty cool. Dude, we got like case after case over here, but no pun intended. Just do a flyby on these. Let's flash on that one because the carbon fiber is a little. Out oh of yeah, it. that's new. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll show them this, and then we'll end with a CF, dude. Okay. Here we go. Talk to us, Goose. Uh, orange peel. Uh, arrowhead shield design, and uh, we have a medium. That's Congress. a Congress right there. Yep. Yep. That's our medium size. Uh, that's a uh, peanut with a bale on it. It's a mini trapper. A slimline trapper, our old 48 pattern. There's another, uh, what's that pick, Katie? Is that 47? Yeah, is it a bigger 40, one? 47 Stockman and our trapper. Wow, I'm putting you on the spot with all these names, aren't I? Um, That's okay. One thing we haven't shown, it's not in the line currently, is the Butterbean. It's a mini canoe. Man, is that a cool little blade. It's locked I'm sure right we'll now. see it again in the case lineup as years yes. go on. And we're gonna end with right here, guys. These, these couple of carbon fiber. There's one down here too at the trapper. Yep. Uh, really tough material to work with. It took us a long time to get these knives to market. Um, it's not the easiest stuff in the world to uh, finish off. Real familiar with carbon, carbon fiber here in TMP. There's different types of it. You have peel ply. You have different variations. I didn't really handle these yet, guys, to see what they are. It takes the uh, it takes the, uh, the weight right out of the knife. Yeah. It weighs nothing. Actually, here, I'll oh, and by the way, that's a Zytel handled. Very affordable user knife right there. Okay, that's a full size <laughs> trapper in that Zytel handle. So this is along, the, I want to show this because I want guys to know that there are user knives out there. Yeah. That oh, you absolutely. can just crash on, they're very affordable. They're yep. in the $20 Great price range. Yeah. You're not going to have that fit and finish to polishing, the hand fitting on, well, I don't know about the hand fitting. These are still made in the US though, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they're not overseas shipped. These are still US blades, okay. they're out there. Little, let me feel quick that. little test here. Okay. Sod Buster Jr. Like that knife? Whoop, show the dealer on that. Sod Buster Jr. Oh my gosh, you're, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's like Why airway. There's nothing to it. So what's right. the price on that, do you know? Uh, That's going to retail I'm, probably closer to um, 75 Probably 75 80. bucks, yeah. yeah. Yes, carbon fiber is always going to add some cost to it. Smooth on the carbon fiber and kind of sharp shoulders on that. I talk about that all the time. Great blade shape. Man, is that a positive lock on that slip joint? Yeah. yeah. It's not a lockback, guys, and so for you folks who live in the UK and my other friends overseas that you can't own a locking blade, you might want to look into the Sodbuster. It's a lot of knife for the money. Beautiful. All right, we're wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. That is Case Knives SHOT Show 2012 Pure Americana. Would you agree, Doodle? Totally. Love that was an awesome awesome visit with Case Knives. Thank you Thank so you. much. We Thank talked you. about the Americana, the fit and finish. I think we honestly represented your product at, accurately in this sit down together. I this, think so too. This is nothing fancy. That's Katie. That's Fred. Big handshake. Thanks Tactical Doodle for helping me out, son. Yep. Nothing fancy signing off. Case. You're going to help us put all these knives away now. No yeah, way, man. Yeah, Only if you give stuff. them to us for like 90% off, that won't happen. <laughs> I don't have room for more knives anyhow. See you guys.